Hey, this is uh, Mike Perry from African Reptiles and Venom. Uh, today we're going to give you a tour of uh, our facility and show you the snakes we have. This is a facility that uh, keeps venom snakes for the supply of venom for the anti-venom production, uh, as well as for training purposes. So we're going to show you the species that we have. Uh, first one I'm going to show you in this cage here is the Eastern Forest Cobra. The snake we see is the Brown Forest Cobra. Niger subfulfa. These snakes we find in South Africa in KwaZulu Natal and then up the coast into Mozambique, going inland to the eastern border of Zimbabwe with Mozambique. And from there, they have a southern distribution that comes into South Africa in the Kruger Park along the Pafuri River and up to the eastern part of the Soakponsberg in the Limpopo province. These are large cobras, they can grow two and a half meters in length, even longer. One of the features is their skin. It's a very, very shiny skin. So they have smooth scales with shiny skin. It's a non-spitting cobra. So they do not spit venom. Uh, the venom is both neurotoxic and cytotoxic. In South Africa we find that these bites tend to have quite a bit of uh, necrosis at the bite site. And sometimes that's all you get, just that necrosis at the bite site. Um, it was one of these snakes that I've lost my finger to in uh, 2010. These cobras eat anything that they can find. They're not fussy eaters, whether it's warm-blooded prey or cold-blooded prey, they don't care. Cold-blooded prey, they will take amphibians, lizards, other snakes, and uh, they will even eat fish. Warm-blooded prey, rodents, birds, and the eggs. Now these snakes don't cause snake bites. Very, very few people get bitten by these cobras. It's normally somebody that's handling the snake that will get bitten. So these snakes, although they're very common in KwaZulu Natal, they are not a, uh, a culprit in snake bite. They don't feature in snake bites. Can you hear the snake hissing? It's a typical warning that the snake gives for you to leave it alone. Very typical for these snakes is the first third of the body is bronze, then it starts going dark. The last third of the body is pitch black. So they've got this color change from the front to the rear. Uh, when they hood, they don't hood often, but when they hood, they make a, a long narrow hood. And they have a tendency, if you corner them and they start hooding, to rear up quite high. So they lift the front body, part of the body quite high off the ground. Uh, unlike our other cobras, which sometimes do not do that. Right, so that's the brown forest cobra. We're going to put this snake back into its cage. Right, the snake you see me holding here is called the Anchichas Cobra. It's a close relative to the Snouted Cobra and the Egyptian Cobra, as well as the Sen Senegalese Cobra, because they have all, all four of those Cobras have the same feature. The snake has subocular scales. Subocular scales prevent the upper lip scales of touching the eye. That's a common feature in all four of those snakes. So they are close relatives, but they are actually different species. So one of the features of the Anchitas cobra are very, very large scales on the back of the hood. You can see there. Right. So the number of scales around the neck, the number is low, but the scales are very large. So these snakes you get in a variety of uh, colors. They could be dark like this. Could be brown, 
could be banded. This one is dark in the front and then the, the second half of the body has some lighter bands on it. Uh, venom of the snake is similar to the snouted cobra. It's a neurotoxic venom with a cytotoxic component. You'll notice that the skin is dull, which is a feature of both the Anchitas cobra and the snouted cobra. Right. Sometimes the scales in the back of the hood can have some gloss on them, but then as soon as you go off the hood, the body becomes a dull uh, appearance. Uh, this is a non-spitting cobra. And as with all cobras, these snakes will eat whatever they can find. Whether it's warm or cold-blooded prey, they're not fussy eaters. So the distribution of this snake is Namibia, into Angola, the northern part of Botswana, the western part of Zimbabwe, and then into Zambia and uh, southern parts, southwestern parts of the uh, DRC. Large snakes, these snakes can reach two and a half meters or more in length. Right, the snake I'm holding here is the Egyptian cobra, uh, Niger Haije. It is a snake that you find in East Africa, uh, into parts of West Africa, uh, north along the Nile into Egypt, and then, then some northern regions along the Mediterranean. Once again, these are uh, large cobras. This is not a, a large specimen. They can grow over two meters in length. And this snake has the feature that I said that the uh, snouted and the uh, and cheetah scobra have. They've got small scales around the eye, which separates the upper lip scales, prevents the upper lip scales from touching the eye. This snake is not a happy snake. It's letting me know that he's not happy by hissing. Not just mostly the snake wants to get away. It doesn't want to be handled, doesn't want to bite, it just wants to get away. There's lots of variation in color from these snakes. Those could be dark, almost black, could be brown, various shades of yellowish brown. And get them with the large blotches on the body. Some bands as you can see with this snake. Um, you can see the skin is not a very shiny skin. There is a bit of sheen in it, but not as prominent as with the uh, the forest cobra. Snake is really not happy. We used to call our snouted cobras Egyptian cobras because of the feature of the small scales around the eye. It was thought that the Egyptian cobra had reached as far south as uh, southern Africa. But it's now known that it is actually a different species. They're closely related, but it's a different species. Once again, as with all cobras, they grow large. They're not fussy in what they eat. So warm or cold-blooded prey. Um, these snakes are often, often good control with uh, rodents and also other dangerous snakes because snakes like puffetters are a favorite item for them to eat.
So the snake is just annoyed because he can't go. If I let him go, he's just going to I let his tail go and off, off he goes. He just wants to get away from me. That's all they want. Just to be left alone. All right, and put him back in his cage. Thank you for supporting African Reptiles and Venom. If you live in South Africa, please feel free to attend one of our snake awareness, snake identification, snake bite treatment and venomous snake handling courses or join our fully online snake course on our website. For any course queries or snake protection and handling equipment, please visit our website at www.africanreptiles-venom.co.za.